Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another installment of the Bald Chef of Bergamo. We're going to make some bread today. We're going to do a little French recipe. Pain de Compion. My French is horrible, so I've asked my wife to give me a little bit of a French linguistics. So how do you pronounce this, Stefania? It's Pain de Campagne. La nasale, mon amour. La nasale. Pain de Campagne. Exactly. I don't know what she said, but that's what it is. Country French bread. So this is just a little recipe you can do at home and um, you know something simple just takes about a day but the flavors are going to be great. Let's check it out. So ladies and gentlemen here we are with our French bread Pain de Campion. Well I don't know I'll get my wife to help with the translations. Pain de Campion. French country bread. So we're going to do this little pre-ferment, little starter. I got 130 grams of water. That's 130 milliliters of water. Metric's easier in this case, and everybody's going to make fun of me, but, you know, it is what it is. And it's nice and hot, and I'm going to put about a quarter teaspoon. I know it says half teaspoon, but this was only half full. Quarter teaspoon. Um, and then I'm going to add just, just a little, maybe another quarter teaspoon of sugar to this. Let it come to life. And I'm going to add 200 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm oh, sorry, of bread flour. 200 grams of bread flour. So it's a 65% ratio, right? 100 grams of flour, 65 grams of water, 200 grams of flour, 130 grams of water. This is the pre-ferment. Let me get the sugar in here, get it mixed up, incorporated. Then I'm going to add the flour, and we'll do that. So been a couple minutes my yeast is starting to come alive I just have a little bit of yeast in I don't have a lot you don't need a lot because you're going to basically um, let this pre-ferment build its own and what gives it a lot of the flavor is the slow um, the slow generation you know of building its own fermentation without kick-starting and throwing a bunch of yeast at it um, this bread's not going to have a lot of that strong yeasty flavor that you get in the supermarkets um, where they mass produce the bread, you got to, you know, supercharge turbo it. Um, so I'm going to add um, 200 grams of all-purpose flour. I'm sorry, bread flour. Did that again? Can't made, made that same mistake. And it's just a pre-ferment, right? I mean, it's really, you know, just a little bit um, to get things going. I'll mix this up. Almost there. Mix this up and then uh, set this aside, cover it, put it in the oven. The oven is off. Just want to get it out of the way, a nice warm place. And let it sit for a few hours, double in size, get itself ready um, before I add the rest of the, uh, the ingredients. Um, so I've got it on a scale. Whoops, I'm one gram heavy. No big deal. Um, I'm just going to use, again, my patented end of the spoon. Here, get it mixed up like that, incorporate it nicely, and then uh, cover it. And it'll be about, you know, let's say four hours, five hours or so, let this thing go, slow go, because we don't have a lot of yeast. This will develop its own fermentation with a little bit of yeast that's there, the water and the, uh, the flour. Um, what you can do is you can make just a regular loaf of bread, and then before you... Uh, um, how should I say this? Before you start to bake it and proof it, you, you set a little bit of a side and use that the next day. And so you just cut pieces of uh, the finished dough prior to baking and have that be the starter for the next day's bread if you want. But I never do that. I always just do a little pre-ferment here uh, because we always want to eat all the dough that we made because we're always hungry and we like the bread. Let me get this finished mixed up and then covered, set it aside for a few hours. So I've mixed this, you can see it's a little bit, still a little bit dry. Maybe that extra gram of flour did it in. So I'm just gonna put a little sprink, a couple sprinkles of water in, and then I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Then maybe I'll let it sit for a half hour, I can check the moisture on it. Um, but I'll keep you abreast of that. Just wanted to give you a sense that this isn't supposed to be a, a perfectly formed dough right now. Um, it'll start to hydrate. Um, you know, don't worry about it. We'll check it. We'll check it out in a bit. So, uh, it's been about 45 minutes, and I just wanted to give you a sense that it has got a little bit moisture. 
moisture. And if you want, you can just wet your fingers. You just give me a little, my fingers are wet. And I'm just going to do a little couple folds here, like that. And I'm not adding water more than I'm just mixing up to get the dry pockets um, mixed in with the more damp pockets there and get the yeast moved around. And I'll do this maybe one more time and then just let it sit covered. Um, I just have a plate over top of this. I'll do this a little bit more, cover this, maybe a half hour check again, 45 minutes check again, and then I'm going to leave it, leave it set and let it grow, um, let it rise a couple hours. And I'll be ready for the next next stage. So the um, the pre-ferment, as you can see, is is leavened nicely. It's risen nicely. A lot of fermentation going on. It's been about four and a half hours. I only did that one fold, as and when I showed you before, and just let it sit there covered with a plate, and it filled up the entire bowl, which is great. So now I'm going to do the second stage. I'm going to take um, 325 grams of water. And I'm going to take 500 grams of bread flour. And I've got half a teaspoon of yeast in here. So half a teaspoon of yeast and 325 grams of water. Again, we're doing 65% ratio. And, you know, the kind of why we let this uh, yeast start to activate. Um, I wanted everybody to kind of think about what we can do with our food and how we can make certain that we're, we're utilizing the best of what we got. And... Uh, I got a little gift for my wife here. Bread is gold from Massimo Buttura. Italian Michelin chef. Yeah, Italian Michelin chef. They're, you know, they have some great recipes in here, but this recipe didn't come from there, but it, it was kind of a little inspiring book that my wife gave me where you talk about how much we waste with food, but also how much, you know, we really are spending on food if you go out and buy bread or buy various foods as opposed to making them from home. So... For example, you know, the bread that we're going to make today is easily 3 to $4, maybe even more if you go to various artisan shops. And we're going to have a half a kilo, a little bit more than half a kilo of flour. So we're talking a couple dollars maximum to do it at home. It's probably a buck, a buck total to do it at home. So as I can show you, it's pretty simple. My yeast is starting to activate here. It's starting to come up. I'm going to go ahead and throw... 500 grams of flour into this mixer and then we'll check it out So I did some calculations while I was measuring stuff My wife's inspiration that she is the finance background The accounting background. I think the total cost all in is about 140 a dollar 40 to make this bread so This is definitely going to be worth it recommend it and so I've added the 500 kilos, I'm sorry, 500 grams of bread flour, a tablespoon and a, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and I put the pre-ferment in. So you can see the pre-ferment in, the dry on top of the water, and I'm going to go ahead and put, let me use my dough hook, throw it into my KitchenAid, my red KitchenAid that I got for, got for my wife Christmas many, many years ago after we were married. San Lucy, San Lucy Day, Santa Lucia, Manawa. And I'm going to put this on stage two, stage two for four minutes, and then stage four for eight minutes. Yes, I'm going to beat this to a pulp because I want to get a lot of gluten. I want to form a lot of gluten in this thing. Um, it's critical to get the right flavor pattern. So let's go ahead and get this thing rocking and rolling here. So, setting two been almost four minutes to keep going before I kick it up a notch let me go ahead and kick it up right now actually just so you can see it but it's what's 15 20 seconds now right there we go. I really want to get a good beauty on there now, I may have to stop periodically and adjust the dough because it may get oblong. Go down, just so you can hear me. So one thing, I, one thing to note is, you know, you can you can make these in any any dimensions you want, right? You can go one kilo, full kilo. You can go a little bit more. You can go six, seven hundred grams. You just gotta make certain that your uh, container is big enough. Your kitchen aid or your appliance is big enough.
set me for eight minutes, and I'll kick it up a bunch. All right, ladies and gents, we'll check back in a few minutes. So I've uh, finished the kneading with this, and it comes right off the dough hook. A little bit of sticky stuff there. We'll collect that later. Do it right now, actually. And as you can see, I'm wearing my ball chip for burning my apron that I got for uh, Christmas time. It was your birthday. It was my birthday. Time flies when you're having fun. With uh. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna put this in my handy dandy trusty cupcake container that I use for all of my bread. And I'm gonna let this thing rest. Now this will be ready in four or five hours to shape and do the final proof. But I'm gonna let it sit overnight. I'm gonna let it sit overnight and get a bunch of flavor out of it. The longer it sits, the more flavor you're gonna get. And I don't wanna make a sourdough, but I kinda of wanna get some of the flavor and help this incorporate. So I'm just gonna set this like this. I'll cover it. I'm gonna put it back in the oven. The oven's not on. I'm gonna put it back in the oven and it'll sit there overnight. And then tomorrow morning, I'll shape it, put a little designs on it, you know. Maybe you'll see Celeste and Michelangelo running around, and then we'll bake it. Check in tomorrow. So, we're back, and as you can see, this has risen quite a bit. It's kind of overproof, which is fine. I really just want to get the flavor and get a lot of the rise. I'm going to take it out of here and I'm going to separate it a little bit because it's going to be big, too big for one loaf. So I'll make one loaf that we're giving away and the other loaf we're going to have home here to, to eat. So let me get this out, use my dough hooks, or my dough hooks, my dough uh, cutters, and then kind of shape it a little bit. You don't need to add a lot of flour, just a little bit. Kind of shape it and then we'll, we'll get it laid out. So. I've kind of shaped this and got a little tiny one here. As you can see, you can reuse your parchment paper as long as it doesn't get too brown, burnt. Just a little cost saving idea. Tough times ahead of us here, I'm sorry. I think the recession is coming. As you can see, this thing will hold its form. I didn't add, I mean, I added a dusting of flour. I mean, almost no flour, right? But I really just wanted to shape it. I'm going to cover this with a towel, a wet, damp towel for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, then we'll throw it in the oven. Well, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll do some designs, so we'll throw it in the oven. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover that one too, don't worry. Um, you know, I said last night that you can let this sit for four hours, probably two to four hours, and then, then do the final shape and throw it in the oven if you'd like. I like to do this overnight, gets a little more flavor. Um, you know, lets those yeasts really start to to, to penetrate and get good good flavor throughout the entire dough. So we'll see what this looks like as it uh, starts to take its final proof. Throw it in and then we'll um, do some design work on it. Okay, so, so as you can see, this is proof nice. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour over top. Just a little bit. This will help when I get, uh, when, it get when it bakes in the oven, you're gonna get some nice color color changes here. Okay, now I'm gonna take my knife. You can take a, just a regular sharp blade, if I can get it out here. There we go. I'm gonna make a little pattern here. Like that. Mickey's doing, he's getting ready to play some twister. I'm gonna do this. Cut it deep so it can explode when you get the bread rise in the oven. I got the oven on at 475. I'm gonna put a put a tin of hot water in the uh, water in the bottom. I'll throw this in for about 15-20 minutes. Take a look at it and probably turn it upside down. Okay. Thank you, Mickey. Mommy. Okay, so I've rotated these a couple times, and they bit in there. Actually, you see, I put them on the pizza stone, so I took the uh, parchment paper out as soon as they um, came up to temperature. They've been in about 15 to 20 minutes, 15 minutes or so. In another five minutes, I'm going to turn them upside down, make sure you get all the sides cooked. Check them out then. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Look at this beautiful bread. 
great crust. Here's a small little one we did. You can see a little pattern there. You can see this little pattern of notches. It's yes, it's very hot. Very hot. Looks so, like a dinosaur. <laughs> looks like a dinosaur egg, huh? Yes, yeah, so we're going to let these cool off. And this is a wonderful, I put them in, you know, so again, I said 10 minutes, rotate 10 minutes, not 10 minutes, it's probably a total 30 minutes between upwards, downwards, backwards, forwards, right, left. Um, you know, each bread's going to be different, each oven's going to be different. See if you can hear the bread. Shh. Hear that crackling? That's from the bread, that's from that's the crust. The best. So, here's a, here's a French bread for you. How do you pronounce it, Celeste? <laughs> Pan de Campon. Oh, Daddy, you forgot. Pan de Campon. Pan de Campon. Grazie. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, yeah, All right, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Chef of Bergamo shows you how to make great French country bread. La boulangerie du Paul Chef of Bergamo. Good eats, hot treats.